Hey everybody, Tony, it's kind of late night and I'm just answering a question from a subscriber who asked me about uh, GoPro Hero 3, what the best software for editing GoPro Hero 3 uh, video is. And also he asked me some settings. I'm just going to read you what he says. It's a guy named King Stevy 2013. It says, hello Tony, I just had a few quick questions. I just purchased a GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition for motorcycle riding and track days. What are the best settings, or rather, what would you suggest to get the best shots while riding? Riding. And what's the best software for editing GoPro videos? Thanks in advance, Stevie. Stevie, um, okay, I'm going to give you my opinions here, okay? First of all, I've not been out riding my, you know, with, a, with my GoPro uh, on a motorcycle or anything super fast. I've done a bunch of videos, though, if you want to go to my uh, channel and look at them, where I'm just driving around. I like to mount three GoPros. I've got I've got three GoPro mounts actually ad adhesived uh, onto the top of my windshield on my um, Honda Civic. Those of you who've watched some of my videos and followed, you can go there and look for them. They're just multicam uh, videos of Get to Know Morganton. I've got some driving around on the Blue Ridge Parkway. I've got them driving around, around Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Just all kinds of little sort of like touring videos, road videos where I can show, I've got one mounted center, one mounted to the left, one mounted to the right, and so it gives, I can switch back and forth between the three cameras, and that'll bring up the software issue here in a minute, and one of the reasons I'm gonna make my recommendation as far as software goes. But um, I would say the best settings for doing that, I like 1080p, medium field of view, uh, and uh, I like 60 frames per second. And the GoPro Hero 3 Black shoots really well in that mode, uh, 48 frames per second is really good too. Um, depends on how fast you're going to be going. And let me tell you something you're going to find out. If you're going to be putting your videos on YouTube, your gorgeous, absolutely spectacular GoPro videos are going to look like crap when you upload uh, them to YouTube if you're going through like deep woods and stuff where there's a whole lot of detail, leaves and strange shades of light and limbs and stuff like that. If you're out riding in a desert and it's not you know, real complicated looking or anything, then those videos are going to look fantastic. You'll go to go watch GoPro's demo videos. You'll notice it's lots of blues, it's lots of deserts, it's lots of skies. If you are out, like for instance, driving your car at 45 miles an hour on a Blue Ridge Parkway and you're just you know going at moderate speed, your GoPro video is going to look fantastic when you get home. You're going to upload it to YouTube and YouTube just, just compresses the crap out of it. It doesn't matter how good quality you give it. Uh, I'm just saying that so you'll know what to expect. Um, you know, your, your high frame rates and things, just it, they look great when you're putting it on your HD television, everything straight from the GoPro out of your HDMI. Or if you burn it onto a, a DVD that'll, or a Blu-ray disc or whatever that allows you to encode you know, over 20 megs a second. The YouTube stuff, it's going to take whatever you give it and it's going to uh, compress it down really low. I've, I've heard a lot of people say that Vimeo does a better job with that, but I like YouTube because, you know, you make a penny or two every view, whatever, on YouTube, and that's the reason I post almost all my stuff there. So if you're doing high-speed stuff in a non-complicated type area, it's going to look really great, but still yet, it's still going to be exciting, even if it does pixelate a lot of the trees and things as they're going by you, and it really will. But my favorite setting is 1080p, uh, 60 frames per second or 48. If you're not going too fast, you'll save some space on your uh, on your SD card by shooting in 48. 30 frames per second still looks pretty good, but you know you're going to start getting some motion blur. If you're driving fast, I would think at least 48 frames per second. And I like the medium field of view. Uh, if you're going, I guess, into real broad vistas, say you're driving along a, a, a big ridge and it falls off this way or that way, you might want to go to wide. I tend to think that medium is great. I'm shooting in medium right now. Uh, medium feels more intimate. The wide setting in a GoPro Hero 3 makes you, makes you feel like you're a mile away from everything. It's, it's very fish-eyed. It gets big, broad um, scenery. I shot some um, video yesterday up at the Linville Gorge, um, and I, I, I shot wide most of the time. Why? Because it's, that, it's one of those places that just spreads out so wide in front of you, you just want to get all that. But uh, most of the time, when I'm doing motion videos, riding, riding type videos, walking through woods, uh, hikes and things, I shoot in the medium field of view because it, it's, it feels more real and it doesn't feel like something 15 feet away from you is 60 feet away from you because it kind of, that fisheye lens effect sort of gives you that feeling. Uh, I do use the narrow field of view sometimes, but fairly rarely. I like the medium field of view 
60 frames per second, 1080p. Now you could try the other ones as well, 1440. Uh, that looks really great. Uh, if you want to get some really high frame rate stuff, then uh, you know the 720p at 120 frames per second looks really great. And 720p is not dead online, but if you go uploading that to uh, YouTube, it's not going to handle it very well. Now the second question, part of your question is what software do I recommend? So, uh, okay. Uh, I don't want to stir up controversy here because you're going to have a lot of different people that like a lot of different kinds of software. And basically, people are going to argue one way or the other based on what they're familiar with, right? So I'm going to tell you what I'm familiar with, and I'm going to tell you why I like it. Um, and, and I have used some of the other software. I'm a big Adobe Premiere Pro CC fan. I've used Premiere Pro since version 2 or whatever it was. or It wasn't Premiere Pro. Then it was just Premiere. And... Um, you know, it's never let me down. It's been buggy a in, in way long time ago in the past, but um, since it's been Premiere Pro and it's been through the various different generations of Premiere Pro, uh, version 6 was salt, rock solid. I loved it. Uh, now the CC version has a lot of really good features. I've used uh, Sony Vegas. Uh, Vegas started out, our, I used to use Vegas back when it was just an audio program and it was fantastic powerful audio program i can't say i ever really got comfortable with it though when it came to editing audio i still liked back in those days cakewalk and which eventually became sonar and uh so i still use sometimes sonar now i use adobe audition because it comes with the adobe creative suite uh, so why do i like uh, premiere more than vegas more than a final cut pro which i have used really just because of the tight integration that Adobe gives you this awesome package of stuff uh, for like $39 a month. Now you can subscribe. So that's like 480 bucks a year. I know that sounds like a lot, but you get so much. And uh, I do so much freelance work that that's like one twentieth a year of what I make in freelance work. And in uh, my, my daytime job, which is I'm a professional video editor too for a hospital system. Uh, the, the, the Adobe creative suite like gives me any kind of, of tool that I need to do something very professional. The stuff you see that I do on YouTube is just, you know, kind of farting around really. It's just stuff I do for fun. So you don't see a whole lot of my really serious work on YouTube unless it's something through Blue Ridge Healthcare, Cleveland County Healthcare System, Times Fiber Amphenol. I could go on with people that I do serious stuff that's broadcast quality and, um, and I do a lot of theater ads. You know, this, you see you the movie theater and you see the, the ads and stuff. So if you come to the Hickory area, Morganton area, uh, uh, parts of the Catawba Valley of North Carolina. You'll see a lot of my work in the movie theaters. And so, yeah, uh, uh, the thing that Adobe does is 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 it manages anything you throw at it. And, and I'm, I mean that. I mean, all the GoPro videos, I've had no problem with any of the frame rates, and I've got a fairly stout computer. Um, at work, I have 24 gigs of RAM. Here at home, I have 32 gigs of RAM. I have a very stout video card, which is important. Make, make sure whatever PC you're using, if you're using a PC. Uh, I have a Mac. I love my Mac. I do certain things on the Mac. and uh, But then when it comes down to really making money and doing professional things, I like to use my PC. I just think I get more bang for the buck out of it. And it chagrins me to say that because I really am a Mac fan. But uh, uh, it, it, it loads up well. Everything runs well if you've got a good video card on your PC. And... Um, you know, protein video originally was, was kind of tough till I figured out I needed a really good uh, video card, a really good graphics card. I really needed, a, you know, a little extra uh, RAM. I also needed to, uh, you know, um, I guess one of the things that really made that better too was learning how to preview better in Adobe Premiere Pro. Here's what I like really a lot about it is, is how tightly it does integrate with Photoshop, with Adobe Illustrator, with... Uh, you know, just about anything, Adobe After Effects, who could forget that? Adobe After Effects I've used for a long time. It's, it's sort of gotten to a point where I don't use it as much because a lot of the things I used to do in After Effects, I can now do in Premiere. And uh, I'm not doing a whole lot of crazy flash stuff. You can buy a lot of the fancier things that you want to do from places like Digital Juice. You can buy templates and things that work really well in uh, After Effects. You can plug things in. I have to do minimal editing and still get some great looking stuff in Premiere. But like I say, I mean, you can do red red video, which is 4K video. You can do 5K video. You can go way on up. You can do uh, the Ken Burns effect stuff. Uh, you can m move huge pictures, pan them, scale them. Uh, you'll see here lately on my, 
on my channel. I'm doing a lot of, um, of time-lapse videos, which are really sequences of photos. And uh, the thing I like really about that is though all those photos, I can really make them look great in Photoshop, then import them and make my sequences. And, uh, you know, if, if you subscribe to the Premiere Pro CC package, you get all these great tools. You don't just get one program. And they keep up with it. I mean, man, Adobe's doing a great job updating their software, working out the bugs all the time. You got Dreamweaver, you got Illustrator, you got InDesign, which is like, man, I, I, InDesign's what I've been using for the last 10 years to do super quality uh, print design. You've got your After Effects, you got, uh, you know, Muse if you want to use it. I could go on and on and on. Uh, just having it really the full version of Adobe Acrobat comes in so handy uh, so often. And you'd be surprised how much you'll use these things and, and you, um, in your video. Uh, the other thing, too, I really like is there's so much support online for learning the Adobe stuff. So um, I'm a big-time Adobe fan, and I've tried, uh, I've, tr I've tried everything. I've tried iMovie. Uh, Final Cut Pro is awesome, amazing. But, you know, once again, I'd have to go down the Mac hole, and I really can't afford to make that kind of big change right now. And, you know, why do I need to go Final Cut if I can do really any of that stuff in Premiere. Maybe some things not as easy. There's no doubt there's some awesome power and, um, and features and some quick, cool things you can do with Final Cut. Even iMovie. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think you'd go wrong with any of those uh, software packages, but I'm just super big fan of Adobe. Uh, they won me over years ago, and they're sometimes a little more expensive than other places, but I really think the Creative Cloud uh, package has really brought that into focus. So it, it has become every man's graphics tool. Hats off to Adobe. God bless you. Thank you, folks. Uh, you've made my life a whole lot easier. I mean, I make my living using their software. If I were a mechanic, it would be a big old butt toolbox that just, uh, you know, every day makes my life easier. And that's what it does. So uh, those are my opinions on uh, how to get really good motion video moving fast and the software package that I prefer to make my videos. Uh, the last thing I will say about the editing in Adobe Premiere, I, I, I teach a lot of people too how to use software. I have a lot of people come, hey, can you tell me how to do this, how do you do that? For the most part, uh, I've been able to teach people in an hour to two hours how to do 90% of what they'll want to do in Adobe Premiere Pro. So to me, it's just a very logical program to use. You can watch tutorials if you want to subscribe to lynda.com or something or a total training. Uh, and I would guarantee within five hours of watching that, you'll know 90% of what you want to be able to do. And you'll, you'll, then you'll fine tune your skills over just years of doing it. So I use Premiere Pro to do all kinds of weird things too. I even, um, I shoot photos of people in front of green screen and I use the ultra key uh, with Photoshop to key out backgrounds and put uh, fo uh, nice portraits of, you know, put lots of backgrounds and things behind people. You'll see that. You can look that up on uh, uh, using Premiere Pro to key out backgrounds on my uh, YouTube channel. I kind of run on a little bit, but this was just an opinion to state my opinion type thing. Anybody, if you want to disagree with me, if you want to tell me where I'm right or wrong, chime in in the comments. But that's my two cents worth. I have nothing against all the other programs. There may be better ways to shoot the fast video, but I think I'm pretty much on target here. And I think the people who have seriously done a lot of editing will probably agree with me on this, um, you know, unless there's just some Apple folks out there that think I'm just totally wrong about Premiere, but I, I dig it. I think you will too. So that's me. It's my two cents. I'm signing off. I got a big long day at, in meetings and things tomorrow. I uh, hope you watch the videos, enjoy them, and... You know, drop me a message or something. Say something to me. I need more friends in this world. So here I am. I'll be your friend. Be cool, everybody. Peace and cheers.